throw the flag. Just under four minutes for Michigan to score on their first position. This, their second handling of the football. Lawrence Ricks is the tailback behind Steve Edwards, and Ricks it is. And Northwestern stopped that one completely. Linebackers Raffin and Morin and Sobek, defensive back up there, to make the hit on Lawrence Ricks. One of the keys to Michigan's offense is the fullback getting blocks. Stanley Edwards, number 32 there, you see, running into Raffin. They were running a blitz, and it's a real difficult situation for the fullback because he's got to meet that linebacker in the hole. And the tailback has a difficulty making cut when they're blitzing like that. On second down and seven, Smith keeps, runs into Cruz. And Moyer, and gets short yardage. Coming up to a third down. And maybe two yards necessary for the first down. They're going to take a measurement. It's, uh, it's Once the Northwestern players moved away from the ball, I could see it a little better, and this may have been the yardage they needed. Amazing. Didn't appear to me that Smith had gained seven yards. And he didn't. He gained six yards, 11 inches. <laughs> That's about it. You don't get it much closer than that. But a very good circumstance. Third down and an inch as Dennis Green looks on. It has been a frustrating year for this man. But I like his style. 21-20 against Indiana. And they went for two with four minutes to play. Well, when you haven't won in 26 games back to 1979, it's almost imperative. Every game, if you're in it, you've got to go for the win just to get an emotional lift. And he wasn't a part of that losing streak. This is his first year, and the Indiana game was their uh, opener, second game, something like that. But they don't talk about that. Nope. They talk about how many they've lost in a row, and it doesn't make any difference whether he was the coach or not. On third down and an inch, Lawrence Ricks is met in the backfield, but he got it. Got the first down, Darren Morgan met him head up with his shoulder pad, but the uh, defensive line of Northwestern had been moved far enough back that Ricks gets the first down. Morgan in there for Chris Natsky, who is normally the starter for the Wildcats, but Morgan apparently a real good week in practice, and he pushed Natsky out of that starting position. Again, it's hard to hold on to your starting spot when you're 0-6. Smith on the run, but looking to throw, and good pass is complete to Dunaway at the 40-yard line, first down. Good pass on the run by Steve Smith. He's running out to his right, which is the best way for him to throw, being right-handed. But he puts the ball down low. No way it can be intercepted. Dunaway in a drag pattern, just coming underneath the deep coverage and beyond the linebackers, got into the open hole between the linebackers, and Smith delivered it nicely. Lawrence Ricks running right into the block that Edwards was trying to throw on Bobby Anderson. Morgan and Moyer over to help out. Do you want to explain drag pattern for me, Jim? Well, they bring the tight end across the, from the back side, and, and what he does is he just kind of comes across the, uh, the flow behind everybody else. Everybody else is coming to one side, and he kind of just drags underneath all the... He drags underneath all the coverage and waits to find an open spot, and he's usually a secondary receiver. Bob Bergeron kicks. Warming up. He is a surprise kicking starter this afternoon, replacing Ali Haji Sheik. Thrown behind Ricks, and he chases it out of bounds. Incomplete, it's called. That could be a lateral, that, and could be back there where it went out of bounds, but the officials seem to be taking it back to the line of scrimmage. I think that was a lateral. Uh, watch uh, as you get on, uh, Smith comes back, and I don't think Smith takes a deep enough drop, and he's standing on the line, throws it back behind the line, although it, and it is behind the line. That is a lateral. He called it an incomplete pass. That's an incorrect call. Went Michigan's favor that time. Third down and nine. 
So Smith goes back to throw again and looks for Carter and overthrows him down at the Northwestern 30-yard line. Coverage by Bobby Anderson, the strong safety today, usually the free safety, but he's covering at strong safety in the absence of David Shaw. That's been another problem for Northwestern. You're already thin to begin with, and then you get some injuries and lose some key players, including a top offensive back. Bobby Anderson goes deep. And Steve Bogan is deeper than Anderson. Bogan, the wide receiver, is back at the 10-yard line. Let's that bounce, and it just gets into the end zone. Bogan made what was probably the right move, and then the ball almost took that little sideways bounce and stayed inside the five. But it does not. Comes out to the 20, first and 10, Northwestern. 58 yards on the kick by Don Bracken. On the next series of downs, Northwestern was forced to punt, so we move ahead to action later in the quarter. 7-0 lead, Michigan here in the first quarter. Wolverines' first drive went right down the field and scored. Their second drive stalled after they had moved out to about the 40-yard line. Wilfolk returns a tailback right behind Stanley Edwards. And it's Butch looking to get to the middle. He slips one tackler, gets over the 40-yard line, a gain of five, which is the way their first drive went. Gains of five yards just about every time they ran the ball. Looks like on that pitch sweep, it starts out looking like a pitch sweep, and then Butch actually cuts it back behind the quarterback, almost over center. Michigan must feel that defensively, Northwestern is going to flow very quickly to the ball. Try to stop them from getting their perimeter game going. On the option, Smith has held each time on the option, and he dives forward to about the 49-yard line. Make it to 48 when they mark the ball. And that'll be first down, Michigan. Real good block here by Bubba Paris, 75. He's out in front. Stanley Edwards makes the good block, but number 70 is being blocked by Paris, and Paris just kept going with him. He sustained the block. He didn't fall down, or the 70 would have made the hit. And that's Keith Cruz. Uh, but that was a good block, really set up by Paris, and a good gain for Smith. Smith to throw. Down the middle for Norm Betts. Got it. And Betts touchdown. Hanging on to his jersey was 35, Mike Gundling, the outside linebacker. But Betts was determined he could see goal line, and he got it. This play really, Larry, set up by the running of Michigan. The free safeties and strong safeties are up so tight, worried about Wolfolk, that the tight end can sneak behind him. And there you see Betts well behind him. And then from here on, it's just determination by the senior from Midland, Michigan, as he gets it about the 15 and then hauls two guys with him into the end zone. Bob Bergeron has one conversion already. We'll try to make it two. And he kicks it right over the net that usually catches the football with 350 left in the first quarter. It's now Michigan 14, Northwestern nothing. On, ready to kick again. Ricky Edwards, Kenny Watkins are deep for Northwestern. And Edwards, driven into the end zone, is going to run it out. A little opening to close rather quickly at the 15-yard line. Edwards ahead of the 16, where it'll be first down Northwestern. Play the touchdown again. Michigan so concerned, or rather Northwestern concerned about the run, but and they let the tight end slip behind it, but also give credit to Steve Smith. You know, he's taking a lot of criticism for his passing. He laid that one perfectly into Betts' arms. That's a tough pass to throw, tough pass to catch, because it's right over your head. And uh, that's a good play both ends, quarterback and tight end. Miller sends his fullback, Brown, out as a flanker. Puts Hinton in motion on this first down from the Northwestern 16. Got Brown, but Brown is wrapped up immediately by the Michigan defense, led by Jim Herman. Herman, then Burgai. 
and fullback Brown got short yardage. Quick work for Michigan, a minute two seconds to score on a 52-yard pass. Steve Smith to Norm Betts, 14-0. Second down and eight, Northwestern. Brown and Ignatowitz now are the two backs split behind Villers. Over the middle, and he juggled it, but hit and hung on. And over the 45 to the 47 yard line goes Chris Hinton, the junior tight end for Northwestern. Evan Cooper finally brought him down, and he had plenty of time alone while he juggled the ball. Missed coverage. Watch 13, bottom of your screen. You missed him out of the out of the frame, but he hits Hinton and then lets him go. Hinton, you see, juggles it, but manages to hold on. He had eight catches this year for 109. That's his ninth catch of the season, but just a mistake in coverage. That was his ninth, tenth, and eleventh catch. <laughs> on first down, they try to run Watkins, and he dives over the 50-yard line, barely in the Michigan territory. But that's the way the Wildcats move the ball through the air. Their leading rusher is Villers, the quarterback, and he gets most of that on scrambles over 200 yards. The second leading rusher on their team this year, Jim Brown, the fullback, has oh, just over 100. So. They do not do a lot of running from the line of scrimmage effectively. Second down and seven. Watkins will try the short side of the field, and he dives ahead to about the Michigan 47. Can't really credit a tackle there. Watkins saw there was no place to go, and he just said, I'll jump as far as I can jump. Well, Watkins has seen his most action against Michigan this game this season because he's only had 13 carries this season up to this game he's only gained 37 yards and he's getting a lot of work this afternoon we saw him last year i remember in the northwestern lineup big Natowitz is in motion miller scrambling and overthrows his intended receiver steve bogan way behind him coverage was pretty good too but I think the key is the fact that Michigan defensively didn't give Villers any lane to run, any lane to scramble. I'm sure that they've been working on that this week because he is such a good running quarterback. And as you saw, every lane he looked up through to try to run on that scramble, he couldn't get there because there was a Michigan guy coming. John Kidd to punt again, although Northwestern this time at least penetrated Michigan territory 47-yard line. Tony Jackson is deep, and it's blocked. On the block, 89, Carlton Rose, and he just didn't give Kidd any room to get that one away. Rose is starting for Robert Thompson, who has an injury. Thompson, of course, the outside linebacker captain for the Wolverines. Rose takes a straight run outside. He's extremely quick for a linebacker. And notice this. He gets in front of the kicker. Even as he goes by, the kicker is able to come down on both feet. That's where you go block the kick, where the ball's going to be, not where the kicker is. And Michigan gets possession at its own 48-yard line first down. Stanley Edwards plowing ahead to the Northwestern 47-yard line. A gain of five for Stanley Edwards, who is about to make some rushing noise of his own in Michigan career statistics. Edwards is averaging 5.3 yards a carry this year. He just hasn't got it a lot. They've mostly gone to their tailback, Wolfolk, or quarterback, Steve Smith. But he's 38 yards away, or he was when the game began, from being a 2,000-yard rusher in his career, which would put him right behind Tom Harmon on Michigan's all-time list. But Wolfolk on a sweep back inside and the flow from the other side came across and made the tackle Gildner Gildner wearing 88 instead of the 50 that I've been told he was going to wear okay you see Northwestern flow to the ball so well they string it out Butch has to make a cut inside there's Gildner to make the hit and I think with that kind of defensive strategy, Michigan may go for some misdirection, maybe even a possible reverse 
to counteract that quickness to the flow to the ball of Northwestern. Third down and three at the Northwestern 45 and the offensive left side, Dunaway and Stephon Humphreys were ahead of the snap that time. That'll cost Michigan five yards. Yeah, it's strange when two guys jump off. Uh, it's hard to figure out then who was at fault, whether the quarterback or the center didn't snap it. If the center didn't snap it right, everybody would have been moving. But usually it's only one guy that misses the count. When two guys jump off simultaneously like that, you wonder maybe if somebody in Northwestern's defensive secondary didn't say something that they heard. That's the end of the first quarter of play with the score, Michigan 14, Northwestern nothing. Sunshine makes it a nice afternoon here in Ann Arbor, but it was a cold one overnight. A little frost on the pumpkin here in Michigan. Uh, not to mention snow on the hoods of my car. <laughs> <laughs> Wolf Folk and Edwards split in the backfield behind Steve Smith to open the second quarter with a pass. A short one and short of the intended receiver, Wolf Folk. That was just a poorly thrown ball. Simple as that. Should be in the mid-40s this afternoon for the homecoming crowd in Ann Arbor to enjoy this one. And they must be enjoying it as Michigan has a two-touchdown lead. Steve Bogan drops back deep to receive Don Bracken's punt. That kind of kicking will help his overall average. And that'll be a 50-yarder for Don Bracken. And that one went up over the rim, I think, of the stadium, which is some kind of hang time. That had to have a four-second hang time on it. Bracken is getting better and better as he goes, as we said earlier. One of the best punters in the nation, second in the Big Ten, averaging 44. If he keeps this kind of kicking up, he'll become the leading punter for average in a season in Michigan football history. The Michigan defensive set, a little different. Lemerand, Meredith, Osborne, and Osborne in there. On this first down from the 20, Watkins moves around till Body and Osborne knock him down. And he got almost five on that one. the middle guard, Dave Meredith, a sophomore from Sterling Heights, the Detroit suburb, as Bo Schembecker changes the look of his defensive front four. Second down and six at the Northwestern 24. Kenton, tight end, flops over to the other side. Zillers obviously changing the call here as Bohoric moves in close and no, took way too much time. A five-yard penalty will erase the four-yard gain and make it second down and 11. That's a tough mistake when you hurt your own uh, situation by taking too much time to get a change in your offensive play. <laughs> Gets the five yards back, plus one. Jerry Burgai made the tackle. It appears that Billers is limping, Jim. Our director noticed that, and so did I on the last handoff. Keep an eye on him. That would certainly change their plans if this young man gets hurt. Looks a little bit like, you know, an Anthony Carter limp, kind of a slow run. I don't know whether he's hurt. Third down and three. He ran out of that one all right. And slides over the 40-yard line. A Northwestern first down. He has a little gimpy step as he comes up to the line of scrimmage. And you can see it there, but 
the adrenaline of an open field lets this young man turn it loose. This is what we talked about earlier, where Michigan wasn't allowing him any lane to run. Now, here to the right side, he's got a good hole. And when he gets through there, you can see the ability he has to scramble and run. He's kind of like a Cornelius Green quarterback. Real quick feet, real deceptive moves, kind of a slithery runner. First down, 42-yard line. Ignatowicz gets it to about the 45. Wrestled down by Lemerand. And Meredith is on the bottom of the pile, and so is Keith Bostic up from the defensive backfield. Second down and seven. a quick hit but he gets the first down Evan Cooper up to really deliver it but Villers was already sliding in safely at the Michigan 41 yard line with a three man rush you're getting the lane to run 66 Mike Hammerstein is the middle guard and he goes to the right now watch the hole open up there it is real big everybody running deep that gives this guy some room to run he's got extremely quick feet he's an excellent scrambler he's their leading rusher and when you give him that kind of room, he's going to take it. Kenny Watkins cannot avoid Hammerstein and Gergash. Second down and ten. Big blitz. And Hinton is open in the middle. Bostic wrestles him down, but it's at the 26-yard line of Michigan and another Northwestern first down. The Wildcats moving a little bit, and a flag is down back near where that play started. Big blitz for Michigan. They came with a free safety, Tony Jackson, all their linebackers, three receivers out, all one-on-one. -on -one. Bostic had... Hitting all alone when he caught it, hitting at 6'4", 240, had a little bit of advantage with six-foot Keith Bostic. The penalty flag. No call on that. They're just moving the down markers ahead. Not a penalty flag. a yellow towel no somebody just dropped their flag unintentionally but anyway it's first down northwestern 26 yard line Miller's checking off the play he had called northwestern readjusts last time they got a penalty flag for too much time this time they get it off and they get an interference call and the pass play intended for Watkins. Burgai banged into him, and that'll go as a completed pass and a first down. Burgai had it read beautifully. He saw Watkins coming out of the backfield from his cornerback spot. He came up, was going for the football, and inadvertently ran into Watkins. I, you know, that's you can't fault a kid for that. That's an aggressive mistake. He was in the right coverage and was getting to the ball. But a penalty against Northwestern. Apparently, the call is going against the Wildcats. They've moved back, and we were calling it in advance on Burgai as a pass interference. Check that. We'll wait a little longer. Offensive pass interference. And a loss of down when he puts his hands behind his head like that. So maybe Watkins had pushed off or the penalty happened elsewhere. It takes away the first down. Northwestern has second down and 25 to go for a first down. And they're back now at the Michigan 41-yard line. Oh, 
Billers cannot scramble out of that mess. Meredith, Hammerstein, Carlton Rose, all there. That's a situation that we talked about earlier. They were not, they were not giving him the lane to run. Outside receiver Kevin Watkins here in a screen in motion, comes back, looks open, but Jerry Bird guy is very, very close to him. There you see his shadow coming into the into the screen. Had they thrown it, Bird guy would have met him when he caught the ball. Third down and 25. And Billers slips, and he's down at the Northwestern 45. He tried to get back up and make it go, but it's fourth down in very long yardage. It's the rule in college football. When the knee touches, you are down. Back foot slides from under him, rather the front foot. Left knee's down. He's down. Northwestern, after getting deep into Michigan territory, goes backwards about 40 yards. and winds up with a fourth and 39. Had a first down in Michigan's 26-yard line. Now they're back at their own 45 in a low punt. Knuckles in front of Tony Jackson and is covered at the 12-yard line. That line drive worked out rather well for Northwestern, getting it inside the Michigan 20. Oh. 43 yards on the punt. And with the wind at their back, Michigan will go back on offense, leading 14-0. Edwards and Wolfolk behind Steve Smith. Wolfolk. Over the 25-yard line before Butch Wolfolk can be knocked down by... Gildner. Butch makes a good cut here to get through. Play is strung out pretty well. When Butch makes up his mind, gets the ball on the inside, gets through the two blocks, gets through that hole, and then gets up about a 12-yard gain. And that was a good decision on where to cut. Had he kept outside, he probably would have gotten no gain. 44 yards and seven carries unofficially for Wolfolk. He needs 56 to get the career rushing record. A little delay, and by the time he got there, Lou Tiberi had closed what was going to be an opening. Near the 30-yard line, it'll be the 28th. Up front, look at Moransky, 72, pull this way, and he runs through the hole. Now, if he'd have taken Tiberi and just cleaned that hole up, Butch would have been off to the races, but... Ed ran through the hole, and then it closed on Butch. And you got to clean that up when you're a tackle pulling like that. Second down and eight. At the 28 of Michigan. Wolfolk looks inside, tries to go outside. He's met by Tiberi and Gundling. Boy, and they had their shoulder pads together and gave Butch very little room to move. Blocking at the point of attack. One of the problems Michigan has had in recent weeks, only one touchdown last week against Iowa. Bo called that disgusting. And I think at this point, the offensive line is not doing what he'd like them to do against Northwestern either. Third down and five as Butch got a hard two yards on that carry. Lawrence Ricks takes over a tailback. And Smith rolling out. Gildner chasing, but he cannot get Steve Smith before Steve gets the first down and out of bounds. Good move. Smith was looking for the pass. Apparently nothing was there. And he just simply outran Gundling to the sideline. That's exactly right. It's just exactly what speed will do for you. Uh, there you see Gundling. He's got Gildner, rather, for 88, and uh, he's got the angle on him and Steve just outruns him for the angle. It's surprising with Anthony Carter so quick. Steve Smith the quarterback and actually the fastest guy in the squad for 20 yards. He's that quick. 
First down, Michigan 37-yard line. Lawrence Ricks. Almost to the 40, but not quite. Capstrand and Raffin are there. At the top of the game, we talked a little bit about tentative running, Larry, and I think in that instance, we saw exactly what Bo's talking about. He, he gets the ball in the backfield and kind of stutter steps a little bit. He's gaining yards. He's gaining a yard or two, but instead of turning it up and taking full big steps and slashing type through the line, he's just stuttering along there, waiting for the hole to develop rather than bust through. Smith to throw on third down, overthrows Anthony Carter, incomplete. So it's fourth down, still eight yards to go. The Michigan offense stalling, third down and eight. Carter splits out to the top of your screen. Vince Bean to the bottom. Blitz. And Smith tried to run out of it and could not. Capstrand reading it very well, the nose guard. Saw Steve try to get out of it and jumped right on him. They're coming with absolutely everybody. It's quarterback draw. There's no room. There you see Capstrand number 11 make the hit. He's a fascinating story himself. Capstrand was actually a quarterback, so they switched to middle guard. And that's about as far a switch as you can make. You might guess that off the number 11, which is rarely worn in the interior line, but you wouldn't think that that could possibly be the case. Don Bracken nails another one, driving Bogan back, and he lets it go into the end zone. Sixty-one yards on the kick. Don Bracken really driving Northwestern back and helping Michigan in field position with five minutes fifty seconds left in the first half. It's a fourteen to nothing game. Miller's dropping straight back on first down. Almost fell again, and he incomplete intended for Brown, his fullback, and almost picked off by Brian Carpenter. Brian seeing some of his first action this week after being injured uh, three weeks ago. The big rush is put on by Meredith, 96. Gets right in the face of Villers, forces Villers early to throw it. Brown can't hold on, slips through his hands, and that's what the tip drill is for, except Brian couldn't react to it quickly enough to make the interception. Second down and 10. Okay. Brown gets outside and cuts back inside and it's close to a first down. Tony Jackson tripped him. Keith Bostic fell on him. Short of the 30 yard line. Take a look at Michigan's linebacker, Gear Gash. Uh, this is what he cannot do, get involved in all of that junk in the middle. He's got to slide behind the line of scrimmage. And there you see North, uh, Northwestern blocking him well, although I think Paul made a little bit of a mistake in trying to get too close to the line of scrimmage. He should have been sliding a little bit more laterally. On third and one, it's Brown again. First down, Northwestern. They cleared people out on the right side. For sophomore fullback, Jim Brown. Averaging almost four yards a carry. Michigan is up front defensively running a lot of different people in there. Middle guard Al Sinchich in the game now. Last series it was Mike Hammerstein. Uh, Meredith and Clay Miller on the tackles along with Tony Osmond. A lot of new names defensively for Michigan in there up front. Watkins cuts it back and dropped the ball. Recovered by Mike Boren of Michigan. 
as Kenny Watkins took the hit and coughed up the football at the Northwestern 33. Give credit for the fumble to Jerry Burgey, number 15, coming on a fire game. And Burgey got his first start last week against Iowa, and he really made the best of it. Watch him come in here, really pops Watkins, and he pops him on the arm. He's carrying the ball. It bounces right in front of Mike Bourne, and Bourne gets on top of it. Big break for Michigan. A chance to add to their total before the half, and they come out with Steve Smith at quarterback. Stanley Edwards, the fullback, and Lawrence Ricks, the tailback. Ricks, big opening. He breaks it. Inside the 10-yard line before Ricks can be stopped by Greg Washington. Now, we talked earlier about Lawrence Ricks running a little tentatively where he stutter steps at the, at the line. Now watch this. There's no stutter step at all. He is on go right there through the hole and down the middle, covers the ball up, splits the defensive linebackers, and again, covering the ball up when he gets in traffic deep. 24 yards on the play, first and goal at the nine yard line. On the option, Steve Smith gets it inside the five, buried by white jerseys. Looking for more of an opening than that, but it did not appear. Now that play later doesn't look like much. It comes down the line of scrimmage, but because Michigan just caved in the entire left side, watch, he comes down, now the line of scrimmage is the 10, and you can see they have caved in everybody at three yards before any white shirts came in view. That's the offensive line just blowing people off. They got good five yards on it, and on the goal line, five yards is a lot. Second and goal from the five. Ricks, he got it. Lawrence Ricks simply running out of the grasp of linebacker Rich Raffin for a Michigan touchdown. Is not blocked that well. You'll see they get penetration in the backfield from the outside, but Ricks just shows great running ability running through Raffin and running through another tackle in the backfield. Bob Bergeron has converted twice. He will try to make it three for three. on a sophomore from Fort Wayne, Indiana. His kick is perfect. And with three and a half minutes left in the half, it's now Michigan 21, Northwestern nothing. Ready to kick again. And he lines one to about the one yard line. Ricky Edwards starts back for Northwestern into a crowd, bounces out of it. Almost breaking away is Ricky Edwards. Gergash made the hit, and it is first and 10, Northwestern at the 25. Lawrence Rick scoring the last Michigan touchdown. Hasn't seen a lot of action, only 147 yards in. 42 carries this year because Butch Wolfolk has done so well, but Rex just really makes that on his own after he breaks the tackle in the backfield. And Michigan, again, takes very little time after the fumble recovery by Boren to go 32 yards and take the 21-0 lead with three and a half minutes left in the half. Hinton's in motion, and Villers is back to throw. He got him. The big tight end lumbers into Michigan territory before Burgey can bring him down from behind. Chuck Chris Hinton. Came with the blitz again with Geargash and Boren running through. Villers read it, saw the tight end come free, gets it to him, one-on-one -on -one coverage with Lemrand, and he stays behind him. And that's a mistake on Lemrand's part, letting him get that free. The Lemrand was about four yards behind him, and when that 6'4", 230-pound tight end gets ahead of steam up, it takes a couple people to bring him down. At 
the Michigan 46-yard line. First down, Villers scrambles out. Not a good choice that time. He just got it over the 45 to the Michigan 44. A gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. One of the things Bo Schembechler has been concerned about is the defensive line, and you can see Al Sinsich is in there, and they're double-teaming him, and he reads the scramble and comes back out. Doesn't do a bad job, but got blocked pretty effectively on that play. Bo's been shuffling people in and out of that defensive middle. Sinsich is one of the guys he hopes is going to answer his middle guard problems. Ignatowicz going right straight into Gergash for short yardage, maybe one. A lot of youth on this Northwestern team at Ignatowicz is a sophomore from Union, New Jersey. Brown is a sophomore, the fullback. Watkins is a sophomore. 20 freshmen and 13 sophomores here today in Ann Arbor on this traveling squad for the Wildcats. Third down and seven. Everybody's covered and Villers heads for the sideline. I think he does have a gimpy ankle because he's able to turn it on when he wants to, but there you can see him clearly. He heard it again when he went out of bounds that time. Yeah, that's the problem with him is he's such a good scrambler. When he does have an ankle problem like that, I think not only one, he is a little bit hesitant to turn it upfield, but two, it hurts him to run, and, and that really takes away the effectiveness that Villers gives them. Second string quarterback Mike Kerrigan is not a good scrambler, and with the offensive line protection they, they have, which is poor, you got to have Villers in there running the ball around. Kid sends a punt over the head of Tony Jackson, and unless it bounces funny, and it does not, it is through the end zone. It'll be first down Michigan at the 20-yard line. With a minute 20 left to play in the half, and a score of 21 to nothing, Michigan. Lawrence Ricks back at tailback. Edwards the fullback on this first down from the 20. Ricks it is on a delay, and he's trying to get outside by himself. He does a little bit. Raffin, Sobek, and Tiberi up to make the hit on him. Gained four and a half yards, almost to the 25. <laughs> the alumni band preparing for a performance today. It is homecoming. Everybody comes back. I imagine a few of those alumni have a little antifreeze in them this afternoon and uh, keeping it warm this day. Anthony Carter on the sideline. He gets away and almost to the 50-yard line. Out of bounds. Bobby Anderson got him. And Alex Moyer, outside linebacker. But that was a beautifully thrown ball by Steve Smith to Anthony Carter. Now you figure this out. Anthony goes out wide, makes a good catch, Smith delivers the ball, but how does he get away from this guy? I mean, he's two feet away. And he takes the sideline route. I mean, he takes the shortest way to go, the sideline where he's got about a foot. That's just unbelievable. Smith throws for Anthony again, no catch. At the 35, coverage by Lou Tiberi. Almost made the diving grab. Second down and 10. 35 seconds left in the half. Anthony going on another deep out cut this uh, time to the far side of the field. And again, I don't necessarily think that's Steve Smith's fault on the bad pass. Anthony kind of rounded that off. That's supposed to be a real square cut. And Anthony rounded it off. The ball had it. Had he squared it off, the ball would have been there. He could have made the catch. Smith is four out of nine for 117 yards passing for Michigan in this first half. And the Wolverines pushing for another score. Got Dunaway on the sideline, and he stepped out before he got the first down. But that didn't use up much time, only six seconds. You see the difference between the ball and where they have to go to get first down. Nice little pattern, though, by Michigan. They run Anthony deep and Fred Brockington, the wide receiver, deep. 
That clears out everybody underneath. Dunaway, again, just kind of drags underneath the pattern toward the sideline. He's wide open, and does he not slip? He'll have the first down, then go out of bounds. Third down and a yard, and they give it to Lawrence Ricks, and he's got the first down. Natsky, Raffin, and Anderson make the tackle on Ricks, and Michigan calls timeout. LJ, timeout. Four seconds left in the half. Michigan pushing for another score. They are inside the Northwestern 40-yard line and have a first down. Anthony Carter knocked down by Lou Tiberi at the 25-yard line, but that's a first down. They're doubling up Anthony to the outside with a free safety. This time he just comes up underneath the cornerback who's got him one-on-one. -on -one. Anthony takes a pretty good shot there from Tiberi. But watch, he'll make a nice little post cut inside. Ball delivered nicely right on the number. Tiberi there, free safety on his way over. They don't want to let Anthony clear with any running room. 19 seconds are left. The ball at the 25-yard line of Northwestern. for it all in the corner and Tiberi had good coverage on Anthony Carter. The officials wave off any possible penalties. Second down and 10. Larry, in this drive, they're going almost exclusive to Anthony Carter, exclusively to Anthony. And I, you got to believe that on the other side, Vincent Bean or Fred Brockington might be coming open. They might be forgetting on, about him a little bit. This one goes to the corner. They actually run out of field. Whether it's interference, Anthony claims it is, is a little tough. Although it does look like the Barry gets a piece of his uh, face mask. 13 seconds are left for Steve Smith and the Wolverines. An out cut thrown over Dunaway and a little short of Anthony Carter. I think he wanted Dunaway. Again, I think Michigan would be advised to go to the other side, take it from field level. The cut, Anthony deep, Dunaway short, and Smith kind of puts it in between them both. Neither of them able to get it. But look to that other side. Uh, look to Vincent Bean now, splitting out wide to the right. He might be coming open with everybody worried about Anthony. seconds are left for Shem Beckler and company to try to score and Bergeron may try the field goal if this third down pass doesn't work from the Northwestern 25 yard line. Across the field away from Carter out of bounds goes Craig Dunaway first down and stopping the clock with two seconds left and here comes Bergeron the kicker. Everybody very worried about the outside receivers, Bean and Carter, and they run the nice little tight end across the middle, deliver it on target, and Dunaway gets out of bounds after first down yardage. I think they would have liked to try to get in the end zone, but Northwestern came out defensively with everybody outside covered up, and uh, Dunaway was actually the third receiver. He looking to Bean first, then to Carter, and then Dunaway, and Dunaway came open underneath. Bergeron will get a spot from E.J. Dickey at about the 21-yard line. Now they have moved it up even further. A little unnecessary roughness. Personal foul called against Northwestern. Tax on some additional yardage, enabling the setup to be at the 14-yard line. A 24-yard attempt for Bob Bergeron. out in the first half as Michigan scores on the final play to take a 24 to nothing lead into the locker room at halftime. And then this first half rolling up some touchdowns through the air once Northwestern went after that running game. Well, the first touchdown they got was to Anthony Carter. A short post pattern. 
comes underneath the deep coverage, and then the rest of this is just Anthony Carter. With this touchdown, he takes over second place in the all-time career Big Ten scoring uh, touchdown list. There you see him just tight roping down the sidelines. And, you know, Anthony has done so many good things for Michigan. One of the things he does besides catching touchdown passes is he creates running room for other people because they are doubling up. And here you see the incredible moves jumping between two guys and then only Anthony Carter tiptoeing down the sideline. And that's why he is, you know, what he is to this football team. Uh, they go to the tight end. And again, uh, partly because of Anthony, they're doubling up on the outside, worried about the run. Goes right down the middle. Steve Smith, a beautiful pass to Norm Betts. And Norm Betts, who doesn't get the deep ball too much, just decides, hey, I'm going to get into the end zone. And he drags him in. And then they get a fumble recovery. He's come back with Lawrence Ricks, uh, who was in there for Butch Wolfolk. Ricks makes a great cut in the backfield and then tiptoes his way into the end zone. Those are the three touchdowns Michigan scored in the first half uh, to take the 24-0 lead along with the field goal from Bergeron. And you can see the dominance of Michigan. Total yards way out in front. The only real effective kind of play offensively for Northwestern has come on the Kevin Villers scramble uh, and the pass to Chuck hitting the tight end. So Bergeron moves ahead to kick off and start the second half, and it is deep to Edwards at the goal line. Knocked right off his feet by Carlton Rose at the 15-yard line. And that is a blow Ricky Edwards will remember. Ouch. That's all I can say. Ouch. Edwards comes up the middle. Rose with one hand, the left hand. Just That's your basic clothesline. Hello, welcome to Michigan Stadium. And he hangs Edwards out to dry. First and ten as Kerrigan takes over at quarterback for Northwestern. We talked about Miller's possible gimpy ankle, and that may be the story. As Jim Brown goes straight ahead over the 20-yard line. Maybe the 23. Good run by fullback Jim Brown. I'm checking the sideline to see if I can find Kevin Villers. But at the moment, I don't see him. Well, there he is, limping a little bit as a matter of fact. Second down and two. Hicks is back to Watkins, and he ran right back into trouble, led by Carlton Rose. Carlton Rose is filling in for Robert Thompson, as we mentioned in the first half. Thompson has a bad left hand. Uh, his thumb is jammed, and uh, they decided to hold him out and put Carlton Rose in there. A lot of changes up front defensively, as Bo Schembechler is going to three or four different looks up front in this game. Right now, he has Lemoran, Miller, Sinsich, Osmond, and Rose across that front line. On third down and one for Northwestern, they try Jim Brown, and he cuts it up for the first down. There's the quarterback who played the first half, Kevin Billers. And the limp is just getting worse. Kerrigan, his replacement, was a two-year starter for Northwestern, and he's an experienced quarterback, so they don't lose much. What they do lose is the Villers' scrambling ability. Kerrigan doesn't run as well, but he throws a little better. On first down from the 27-yard line, he'll get a chance. Got Hinton, and Hinton is hit right away by Gergash. And Lemoran. Hinton was very successful on one-on-one -on -one coverage against Lemoran in the first half. On that play, Lemoran really stuck Hinton at the line of scrimmage. He would not let him release, would not let him get out. And you see Kerrigan has to wait. And when he does get free, Gergash and Lemoran are right there. Game three. Here it is from ground level. And you can see Lemoran and Gergash getting in there to make the hit. Second down and seven. Got 
Hinton again, and he gets out of trouble this time and may have the first down. Chris Hinton going sideways on the far side of the field may have gotten the yardage. Hinton is another one of those amazing players from Northwestern who has changed positions. Last year, he started six games at a linebacker spot, four others at tight end. Dennis Green came in and said, I think this guy should be a tight end, and you can see why he thinks that. Good running ability, good hands. Green thinks Hinton should be a guy that catches at least five passes a game for the Wildcats. First down at the Northwestern 38-yard line. Mike Kerrigan making things work. He's got his fullback, Brown, who cuts back against the grain, gets more yards. Simsich makes the tackle. A gain of about four on that play. Good time to run a screen pass, because Michigan's coming with the blitz. The Kerrigan runs it out, feels the pressure, hits Brown. Lemrand has him one-on-one. -on -one. Lemrand does not. He overruns the ball, and then he gets blocked. Lemran should have had him in the backfield, but overran the ball, didn't take or took the fake to the outside. Second down and six. 42-yard line of Northwestern. In and out of the hands of intended receiver Kaiser. Steve Kaiser split in another one from Michigan. Bloomfield Hills and Brother Rice. Kaiser is 6'6", six, six, two and a quarter, and he plays split end. Uh, that's usually a tight end spot, and as a matter of fact, he started some last year as a tight end, then moved out to split end. But that 6'6", six, six coming across the middle for those little defensive secondary guys, got to look like a mountain. And still, Kerrigan overthrew him. On third down, they're still facing six yards for a first down. They got Watkins, and they've got the first down. And he dropped the ball. The Michigan players are saying it is theirs. The officials have not yet made that indication. Now they do. Michigan's ball, a big break as they recover a fumble at their own 44-yard line. Tony Jackson, the man, I think, who got it. Coverage on the play is one-on-one -on -one with Burgay, and you see Watkins gets a step on him. Now, the hit right there. And the ball pops loose. We can't see who recovers it. It's either Jackson. It's either Jackson or Lemoran. But Watkins has a big break on Burgay anyway coming out of the backfield. He's one of the quickest guys in the secondary. And there the ball is loose. Northwestern claiming it wasn't a fumble, but certainly in that replay it was. Butch Wolfolk on first down. Fouls ahead to about the 48-yard line before Rich Raffin brings him down. Next. Two big fumbles by Watkins that cost this Northwestern team. And the next time Butch carries the ball, we might see uh, the run that breaks the all-time Michigan career rushing record. He needs but four yards to do that. And he has passed up some pretty good football players on his way. Second down and seven. It's Carter on the fake from Steve Smith, and Carter gets the first down inside the 45-yard line. A little reverse action. Fake to Wolfolk up the middle. Smith heads one way and hands off to Carter going the other way. They didn't break the big gain that they had expected, but they got eight or nine. The interesting thing is how they come back over the ball with Kurt Becker, number 65. You see, Anthony's got to slow up because Becker's slowing him down. And, and in a way, that kind of hurts him because he's waiting for a block. There's nobody out there to block, and he's, he's, he's almost pulling back on the throttle. They're discussing penalty options right now. Frankly, I don't know what they're about to dish out, but it'll be against Michigan from the point of the play. From where it had ended, up at the 44-yard line. Holding is the call. All right, I understand that call. 
So I didn't see the flag go down on the far side, and referee Jerry Hendrickson straightens it all out. It's back to second down and seven. Gets a big opening. He got it inside the 40. Easy first down for Stan Edwards as Northwestern was fooled on that play. Raffin and Sobeck react to make the tackle, but not before Edwards had ripped off a fine game. They talk about counteraction. It's a trap. Kurt Becker, big number 65, big black on Raffin. And Edwards just gets up through the middle as Northwestern with people outside looking to stop the perimeter stuff. Michigan breaks it back over the middle. Good gainer. First down, Northwestern 37-yard line. Butch Wolfolk jumps over Norm Betts inside the 30. And that'll do it. That'll give Butch the record. Darren Morgan made the tackle, but Wolfolk gains nine, almost ten yards. Make it ten yards, exactly, as they move the chains. <laughs> Unofficial, but... You know he's adding to that total every time he carries the ball now. Smith for Carter. Knocked away beautifully by Tiberi. Lou Tiberi just saved six points because Anthony was behind him and in the corner of the end zone, and the pass was going to be there. You know, one of the things about running backs you don't hear, you hear about the touchdowns, but this is what they have to do, too. They have to block. And part of the reason Michigan's successful throwing the ball is because everybody in there has to block. He's the leading rusher, but he makes the great block to keep Smith from getting sacked. And then I think Steve Hunter throws this just a little bit. Anthony has to wait. Tiberi, though, makes a great play. Second down and 10. At the Northwestern 28-yard line on the option. Steve Smith inside the 20. Raffin grabs him from behind and keeps him from breaking it all the way. Rich Raffin has impressed me, Jim, a couple of plays ago when Kurt Becker delivered a good block to him. Raffin turned away from that block and a couple yards further downfield made the tackle. The key here, though, is sustaining the block. 72 Moransky, and there's the option. He options the end well, but Smith has about five yards before he gets any enemy pressure at all. Part of the reason for that is Offensively, the line really does a good job sustaining blocks because those option plays take a long time to develop. You're talking about Raff in a moment ago and, and how impressive he is. He was moved back to linebacker this year after playing tight end last year, and he leads the team in tackles coming into this game, and he has 48 solos, and that is more than twice the number for anybody else on the team. He is just around the football all the time. That's good for Raffin, but a bad sign, meaning that your front three or four or five players are not getting the job done. Your linebackers are going to mostly lead your team in tackles, but they shouldn't be that far in front. Third down and a yard. Well, less than a yard, actually, but that's what it has to be called. And Butch Wolfolk cuts it up inside the 15. A Michigan first down. Capstrand stalling the play, finally. But an easy gain of five yards for Butch Wolfolk. And nobody has ever gained more yards in a Michigan uniform than that young man. Not anymore. Not Billy Taylor, Ron Johnson, Rob Lytle. Gordon Bell. Bob Chapius. <laughs> First down and 10. 14-yard line of Northwestern. Action play, Steve Smith, goodbye. Touchdown, Michigan. We talked a little while ago on the 
option about sustaining blocks, and this is exactly what you mean. There is Stanley Edwards with a real good block on Raffin that actually cuts him free. And, and it takes so long to develop that the offensive line has to hold on to that block for a count of three or four. And when Smith gets five yards before he meets any enemy pressure, you know that offensive line up front has done the job and held on to those blocks. Bob Bergeron to convert. He does. And with 8.29 left to play in the third quarter, it's Michigan 31, Northwestern nothing. recovery leading to another Michigan touchdown. They drove 32 yards in the first half after a fumble recovery. They go 56 yards after that fumble recovery and score again as Bob Bergeron kicks off to Kenny Watkins at the goal line. Another solid hit on Kenny Watkins, although this time he really stayed with it and kept his feet to the 18-19 yard line. Gray makes the tackle on him. The touchdown by Smith was set up by the fumble, true, but watch up front. There is no penetration whatsoever. 32, Stanley Edwards makes the key block on 47, Raffin, and then Smith just uses his quickness and runs through the tackle. And he, as you saw, they were just no penetration at all. Michigan's offensive line blowing people off the ball. down at the 18-yard line. Watkins runs into Boren and gains only a yard. Mike Boren filling up the hole as soon as it opened, and Watkins had nowhere to go. Second down and nine. it away to Brown is pulled back. Lemoran hits Brown and the fumble drops right at his feet. Brown recovers it himself. Northwestern retains possession but gains no yardage or a half a yard at best. Kerrigan lucky to get it off because Michigan coming with the blitz from the top left side of your screen. Watch 13. Keith Bostic. He is flying. There, that's three. Marion Body just barely misses getting uh, Kerrigan for the sack. The Northwestern should have been in a good play for that situation with the screen, but it didn't work out as Michigan covered well on the flank. Third down and nine. Ah! Kerrigan goes deep. He got his man, and they call it complete. But there might be a question about inbounds, out of bounds. No question. It's at the Michigan 39-yard line. Steve Kaiser over the shoulder makes a fine reception. The key to the play, the fact that he has this much time to throw. He's back there five yards, waits for the guy to come through. Kerrigan, the better passer of the two, throws it out beautifully and a nice catch laid out by Kaiser. Kaiser gets runs a straight fly plat pattern and the free safety of Tony Jackson has got to get over there. Tony makes a mistake and doesn't take a very good angle on him and Kaiser just runs down the sideline, makes a good catch. First down, quick pass to Watkins. He fumbled. They say that he had made a reception. And what? I thought it might have been an incomplete pass. It didn't look like he had control, Larry. Uh, and, and if he didn't, that's no fumble. It's an incomplete pass. It's the kind of situation they've run before. A back out of the backfield with Michigan coming on the blitz. Hits him. Now, does he have control? It's close. Referee says he did, and uh, Bostic recovers. Michigan's <laughs> ball, first down, 36-yard line, stopping a fine Northwestern drive, frustrating the Wildcats. Wolfolk plowing straight ahead, gets it over the 40-yard line. 
Got six on the play. Or five, exactly five, second down and five. and Wolfolk behind Steve Smith with Anthony Carter split out left and Vince Bean to the right. But it's Wolfolk cutting back in the Northwestern Territory. First down, Michigan. Fred Sobeck stopping Butch Wolfolk. Butch gets a, a good block up front from Becker and Paris. Watch 65-75 sustaining. They're running their blockers out over the hole. Butch cuts it back up in behind him. Now that's that's good sustained, good blocking. Sometimes the hole is supposed to be outside, but if they're flowing that way, the offensive line can take them by the hole. That's exactly what happened there. At the Northwestern 48-yard line, first down. Carter in motion gets the pitch. And he's tripped, actually, by Lou Tiberi who was on the ground and raised the foot up and just caught Anthony by the ankle. Give him a couple of yards to the 46. This is your basic student body left, but it's the ball is given to Anthony, and they're again flowing so well to the outside to the ball, and it is Tiberi that actually gets a foot on him after Wolfolk delivered the block. It's a good play by Tiberi. He's on the ground. He says, man, I got to do something, get my feet up there, and he did it, and it worked. Second down and eight. Butch Wolfolk hanging on. He's hit by Gildner. But Butch gets it over the 45. Yardage coming a little more difficult here against Northwestern at midfield. He is ahead to the 42-yard line. down and four. Larry, if Michigan decides to go, I think, through the air anymore, look for their tight end to be coming open because Northwestern is doubling up both wide receivers and the tight end's got to be open somewhere in the middle. Butch Wolfolk with blocking and Raffin knocked him down from behind, but Butch has a first down at the Northwestern 35. That is not tentative running. We talked about tentative running earlier. Butch slashed through that opening. Well, that's what you like to have your back do. He gets the ball, sees the hole, and gets in it right now. And then makes a good cut, and he's always going upfield, north and south. Not worrying about sideline, not worrying about making fancy moves, but getting the tough, good yardage. First down. Stanley Edwards has running room, bounces off tacklers, gets nine. Greg Washington finally wrapped up Stanley Edwards. The holes are opening at the line of scrimmage, and Wolfolk and Edwards taking advantage. Three carries, 30 yards for Stanley. Not much, but quality carries. Absolutely. And Michigan offensively out front, really nothing fancy. Straight ahead blocking, maybe a couple of traps inside, but... Really, between the tackles, they're beating Northwestern up. Second down and one. Smith to throw. Overthrown. Looking for tight end, as you predicted, Jim. Dunaway down at the goal line, trying to add six more. When you double up outside people and you keep those people outside, that means the free safety or the linebacker has to be one-on-one -on -one with the tight end and in most cases you'll get that tight end free and he was free there Smith just overthrew him a bit seven of 16 for Smith not very good passing this afternoon although he has hit uh, again a quality seven bets for a long touchdown Anthony Carter for a touchdown third down and one Wolfolk. There's your first down. There is also a good tackle by Bobby Anderson, who got a shoulder into the gut of Wolfolk. Butch makes a good cut at the line of scrimmage. Again, you see good blocking up front. The hole develops. Then he cuts it outside, back inside to get the first down, and holds on to the ball. 
Good stick by Anderson to stop Wolfolk at 2.05 with world class speed. That's good open field tackle. And a 100 yard gain for Wolfolk. 101 yards and 17 carries. It's first down at the 19 yard line of Northwestern. Wolfolk gets his 20th carry. Down to the 14 he goes. Five more yards. 106 for Butch. That makes it six out of seven games this year. He's rushed for 100 yards. Stopped only by Iowa last Saturday. He's averaging over six yards a carry coming into this game, and that average will continue to stay there or even go up a little bit. 15 career 100-yard games for Butch. And penalty flags fly on that one as Steve Smith didn't quite get out of there with the ball in a hurry. Well, actually, the center didn't snap it right on time. Everybody else was going, and the center was holding on to the football, and he snapped it a little late. Everybody on Michigan's offensive line was offside. That stalls the drive. But that, again, proves one thing. Michigan's offensive line is coming off the ball and allowing such little penetration that the center was a half a beater, a full count slow, and he was still able to deliver the ball to Smith without any trouble. Second down and 10. Anthony Carter splits out to the right, the only split back. They run the option away from Anthony, and Steve Smith is pushed back by Raffin and Cruz. At the 15-yard line, Steve got four. Boy, Raffin has been all over the football field for Northwestern. You know, Northwestern's had some pretty good linebackers last year. You remember Chuck Kern. He was one of the finer linebackers in the conference. And Raffin, who started his career as a free safety and moved to tight end, has taken over where Kern left off. The option opens up outside. Smith cuts it back. Raffin gets off the block of Stanley Edwards, and there you see why he is such a good, tough tackler. Had him in one arm, picked him up, and threw him down. Third down and six. Northwestern's 15-yard line. The option almost opens up. Natsky hauls Steve Smith down, and the loose ball is whistled dead. about this earlier in the season as Steve Smith keeps it a lot on the option. He might want to get it out to Butch Wolfolk. Here's the, the best rusher Michigan's ever had. The pitch back was covered, but Butch with his speed, if you get the ball out to him, can turn the corner around that defensive back. Although they went right after him, Alex Moyer's first move when he saw it coming was to go outside for Wolfolk. Contain, make Smith take it inside, bring the linebackers up. Fourth down and five. 14-yard line. Too much time. They were set, ready to go, but Steve Smith either delayed calling or was checking off at the line of scrimmage. Well, they had a mix-up early. Dunaway was at one side of the line, thought he was supposed to come out, ran off the field. Wolfolk told him, no, you're on the other side, went back and lined up, and that was the, took the five, ten extra seconds that cost Michigan a chance to go for the first down on fourth down with five. Now they'll have to go to the field goal and give Bergeron another chance. 26-yard line, 36-yard attempt. Good, no, it's no good. Off to the right, Michigan's scoring drive stalls on their own mistakes. And Northwestern will take over with just seconds remaining in the third quarter. Bergeron, who's getting the start today for Haji Sheik, has kicked one earlier and has looked very impressive, but he can tell that he's looking for this one and he knows as soon as he hit it that he just pushed it a little and there was no way it was going to get in and that's a disappointed young man as I'm sure he's trying to make that starting spot his alone from now on. Kerrigan has Brown and Ignatowicz behind him. He throws for Ignatowicz. Got it and over the 25-yard line. 
Tackle made by Brian Carpenter. A gain of six on the play, and that's the end of three quarters. With the score, Michigan 31, Northwestern nothing. Kerrigan brings him out at the 25-yard line on second down and four. The flat pass for Brown and Carpenter. Bostic, rather, has him and wrestles him down. Short of a first down. Northwestern looking exclusively, it seems, to go to their backs out of the backfield here in this situation. As Michigan's playing deep. They don't want to give up the big play, so they're doubling up both outside receivers, and the backs will come free in the flats or over the middle underneath linebackers. Third and two from the 27. Wildcats had a good drive going last time to LaFumble stopped them. Tim Brown finds his own running room near the 30-yard line and near a first down. Nothing there on the left side of the line. He just headed it back to the right side. Uh, that's what a runner has to do when you're in heavy traffic in the middle is look for any kind of a crease, any kind of little daylight to get to. Jim Brown out of Brother Rice did just that. The point of attack closed down. He slid right, found a little spot, got through it enough for the first down. Right on the 30-yard line. Kerrigan throwing for Brown. He wasn't ready, and Lemoran gives him a bump after the ball passes by. Brown has a gimpy ankle, too, as you can see. Uh, Michigan worried now about that back coming out of the backfield, so their linebackers are getting on them right now, one-on-one, -on -one, reading their keys. And Lemrand uh, was right with him, and I think Brown was more worried about Lemrand than he was the football. Second down and 10 for the Wildcats, who are apparently headed for their seventh straight loss this season and their 27th in a row. Ignatowicz gets four yards. Susich had a hand on his ankle. Boren really makes the stop, along with Evan Cooper. Five and a half yards, call it six to go for a first down on third down. I'm sure the crowd, 100,000 here, appreciate the sun this afternoon. Keep them from getting too cold. Those sitting in the shade, though, in front of us, have to bundle up. Third down and six for Kerrigan and the Wildcats. Got it to Ignatowicz, and he's got his first down. In the Michigan territory, a penalty flag is also down as Mark Ignatowicz is stopped by Tony Jackson at the Michigan 48-yard line. Penalty, however, against Northwestern. And the penalty is holding, and the reason this pass is wide open is because of the holding. Uh, over the middle, Ignatowicz is wide open, and Bostic had him, and he is being held by number 87. That's uh, Ralph Jackson. And uh, the referee was right there and saw it. Bostic would have been a lot closer had he not been held onto by Jackson. The officials still discussing things with Kerrigan and Jackson at the 45-yard line of Northwestern. And they determined that as the spot of the foul, I think. At any rate, the ball is back 40-yard line. And it's third down and less than a yard. Didn't hurt him that much. The foul came so far upfield. Timeout called by the Wildcats. They want to get organized too. 12-41 left to play. It's 31 to nothing, Michigan. Now 
we go again on third down in the yard for Northwestern. The ball at their own 39-yard line. Quarterback sneak gets the first down for Kerrigan. Surprised they didn't do that. And then call a timeout if wanted to get organized. A simple quarterback sneak, you would think, wouldn't take a whole lot of planning. Picked up two on the play, so at the 41-yard line, Northwestern ready to go, and that couple had other things to talk about. A double pump by Kerrigan, and he gets it out to Callaway who just gets it back to the line of scrimmage. Clay Miller is hurt on the play. Callaway comes open because he's standing there. Watch him to the right, 44. Now, he, he is held up by Lemran and then comes back, and he makes his third, fourth, and fifth receptions of the year. But Michigan there, though, with the linebackers, and he's got no place to go. Second down, still 10 yards to go. Clay Miller is helped to the sideline and being attended to by the Michigan trainer now. A little motion for Hinton and Kerrigan unloads beautifully caught by Steve Kaiser right near midfield. He was well covered and yet Steve Kaiser made a good catch. And uh, Mike Kerrigan made a real fine throw under heavy pressure. He's got the blitz coming outside body. He can feel him coming, delivers a bullet. And Carpenter with good, good coverage on Kaiser. It's just a well-thrown ball and a nice catch. Third down in a yard as they got nine. They need this one to keep it going. And they got it easy. Ignatowitz gets inside the Michigan 45 to the 43. Marion Body and Keith Fostick come up to get him. But the Northwestern line sealed that side off and gave Ignatowitz all the running room he needed. Michigan with all their people up front expecting something between the tackles. Ignatowitz gets the ball, cuts it outside immediately where Michigan had nobody as they caved him in. Gets the first down easy. 43-yard line, first and 10 Wildcats. 10.45 left to play in the game. Northwestern just trying to keep from being blanked is all now. Winning this one a bit much to ask. Kerrigan being chased by Rose and his throw for Jim Brown a little bit in front. Not a bad throw for on the run, but a delicate one to drop in over Brown's shoulder, and he didn't quite get it. And Dennis Green's got to wonder where his blocking went on the backside because Carlton Rose came in there just free as a bird. Nobody even touched him. Michigan agreed was running a blitz, but Kerrigan knows that Rose is right on his back, and he says, I got to get rid of the ball in a hurry because I'm not going to make it away from that quick linebacker overthrows the receiver. Brown didn't know it was intended for him either. He thought, I think, there was another receiver in the vicinity. The stats on Mike Kerrigan on second down 10. Again, a good rush. Hurries his throw and just misses Kaiser for once an interference call on Tony Jackson, but he'll not get it. Once again, Michigan with the blitz, and it forced Kerrigan to throw the ball early. Kaiser was downfield, wasn't ready for it, and, and Jackson was able to read it as Kerrigan had to get the ball early. Jackson able to read it early, so he just went and followed Kerrigan, and he's going for the ball, too. No interference there. Third down and 10. A tough call now for Northwestern. Everybody knows they're going to throw. Out for Callaway. Got him, and so did Brian Carpenter. Got maybe a yard and a half or two yards. Carpenter came up on the back, swinging out of the backfield, and made a very good open field tackle. Uh, Carpenter reads it nicely, because he's the deep corner, and he leaves his man and comes up right now, knowing that they're going to that back out of the backfield. 
Callaway, as soon as he caught it, turned upfield, and there was Carpenter. He read that nicely. Nine yards to go, fourth down. It looks like Northwestern will give up the football, but I'm surprised. Hunter John Kidd is back, although you might look something else to happen, like the short man, Ignatowitz, to run it or throw it. Tony Jackson deep for Michigan. Ignatowitz does run it and run it well. Looks like he has the first down. Ah, I guessed with Dennis Green that time. First down, Northwestern. Really the simplest of all fake punts. Uh, I've seen, you know, uh, give it to the punter and he throws a pass. I've seen it giving it to the short man and he hands off to somebody running around back there. That's just an off tackle play from a shotgun position, except you put one man deep. Got him a first down at the 32 of Michigan. So Kerrigan returns. Sideline pass complete to Kaiser. This fellow, Steve Kaiser, is becoming a problem. And Got the golf gloves on and he's making catches. And Kerrigan is really putting the ball right on the numbers. He has thrown, uh, I'd say, four passes that were uncatchable. There were bad passes. The rest of them, he has drilled right in the middle. This is a straight out pattern. Delivery on the break. You can't do anything about that when you're a defensive back when it's that well executed. Second down and a yard. Ball at the 23. Kerrigan wants it all. Knocked away by Carpenter. Intended for Jenkins. And Carpenter batted that one up in the air. And he's a little upset that no blue jersey got a hold of it. That's an awfully tough pass to throw. You've got three deep backs who are all kind of safety center field type guys. And you throw right into the middle of all three of them. And they are lucky that wasn't picked off down in the yard. Hinton in motion. Ignatowitz tries to get through for the first down. He ran into Gergash before he got to the line of scrimmage. So we'll have to have a measurement here. The officials call their own timeout to see what happened. Well, you know they'd go for it anyway if they're short on fourth down. They've already done it once. Looking to stop a streak of scoreless quarters, and it would break a streak against a Michigan team. Let's see, six, seven, eight, nine quarters now where they have not given up a touchdown. They lost that game to Iowa, but it was field goals and not a touchdown that beat them. First down, Northwestern. At the Michigan 22-yard line. left to play. A 31-0 score. Jim Brown in trouble and finally buried. Got to the 19-yard line. Gergash and Herman are there and so is Evan Cooper and Keith Bostick. Brown makes a good cut. He has nothing and he gets out of the way of Lemran, and then here he makes the real good cut back upfield just to get some yardage, uh, and he does a good job. He gains three on a play where he shouldn't have any. Second down and seven, and credit Mike Lemran with forcing that play. Blitz, Look big out. blitz. Kerrigan avoids the blitz, and Kaiser almost makes the catch. Wow, Steve Kaiser scrambling around as was Kerrigan and 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 give Kerrigan credit for getting that ball off under unbelievable pressure they're coming with absolutely every there's Carlton Rose heading straight back he fires the ball and hits Kaiser in the hands that's a great pass Kerrigan you know was the last in his first start at Northwestern led the Wildcats to their last win which came back in 1979 over Wyoming third down the 
life of a Wildcat quarterback is hazardous. But Kerrigan may have the first down. He is up near the 10 yard line before Carlton Rose and Gergash bring him down. And it is first down Northwestern. They say Kerrigan's not supposed to be the scrambler of the two quarterbacks, that Villers is the one, but Kerrigan shows a real good choice here going right up the middle. And again, Michigan's rush gives him the lane. Uh, they rush outside, everything opens up inside. He's free for 10 yards up till he gets to the linebackers. First and 10 at the 11. Northwestern trying to have a mistake-free drive that results in some points. Callaway makes the catch. Limeran makes the tackle. Excellent job by Callaway to hang on to that one when the collision came so soon. And an excellent job by Lemoran to read the pattern. He knows he's gone to his backs a lot. Lemoran's been told, keep that back out of the backfield on your mind. I'd say that's keeping him on your mind. A loss of yardage on the play, back to the 15. It is now second and 14 for a first down. Incomplete, intended for Jenkins. And not really thrown near. Bostic on the blitz forced Kerrigan to get rid of it early and he wasn't open. He had to throw well before the break was made on the pattern and really no chance because Bostic was in on the blitz and had Kerrigan pressured that much. Third down. They could try a field goal, but I don't think that's what they're after at this point. Let's go for it all. Again intended for Jenkins, again thrown well out of his reach. It's fourth down. And I think I'm wrong because it looks like the field goal team is on the field. A moral victory in a sense, not getting shut out or whitewashed by Michigan for the Wildcats. They were shut out last week. They've been shut out three times this year. Rick Salvino is their kicker. The left footer will go from about the 23-yard line. A bouncer on the snap from center, and he didn't make it. A bad snap probably contributed to poor set, and Salvino missed the field goal attempt from 33 yards. Part of the problem with kicking is... <laughs> Getting that snap right, there's so many things that are involved in making a good kick. And you saw Tiberi had to field it on one hop. Good shortstop play, but when you have to do that, set your timing off a little bit, and the placement can be a little bit off. When that happens, the kicker really is at the disadvantage then. First and 10 at the 20-yard line for Michigan. Ricks bangs up over the 25 to about the 28-yard line. Quarterback is B.J. Dickey for the final five and a half minutes of this game. Second down and two. Well, Wolfolk has his yardage. We need another eight yards for Stanley Edwards. But he is not in at the moment. Tom Hassel is the fullback. Ricks gets the first down over the 30-yard line. The eight additional yards for Edwards would give him 2,000 in his career. Place him 11th all-time among Michigan rushers. Well, this is good for Lawrence Ricks, too, because he really hasn't gotten enough action that I'm sure Michigan's coaches would like to have, like, I wish I could talk today. <laughs> anyway, Lawrence Ricks is getting some good work in there, which he hasn't gotten in the past. Right. I know what you meant. 32-yard line, first down, and Dickey rolls right. Out of bounds at the 36. E.J. Dickey on an option. Decided to run it, and 
got four. The interesting thing is they pull a guard, 76, Stefan Humphreys. It's a rollout pass, and Dickey just decides, let's turn up field. But Humphreys, you see, stays in the line of scrimmage. It's a tough decision for him to make, because if he does throw, he's downfield, and there's a penalty. So he's got to kind of hear from the quarterback when to go, and he should have had that block. Dickey might have gone for more yardage. Second down and six. Lawrence Ricks. Ridden down short of the 40-yard line or right on it. Linebacker Raffin and Gildner are up to make the tackle. They talk about Northwestern, and a lot of people are saying they shouldn't even be in the Big Ten and that kind of thing. Well, they have Big Ten quality caliber players. Raffin is one. Gildner's another. Kerrigan's an outstanding quarterback. Kaiser is a good receiver. Hinton's a good receiver. It's just they, they lack depth, and I think at certain skilled positions they have a problem. But, you know, I think that they ought to stick around in the Big Ten. It's nice to have ten teams in the conference, even if Northwestern's down right now. On third and two, Lawrence Ricks breaks out. And they won't catch him. Lawrence Ricks goes the distance on short yardage, third and two, turns it into... A 60-yard touchdown play. They run the play back to the weak side. Northwestern knows short yardage. If they break a crease, and they did, Ricks breaks through right there. That tackle is the last guy there because all the secondary men are up on the line of scrimmage to shot and stop the fullback or the fullback or tailback uh, right up the middle. Ricks breaks it free. There's nobody back there. With his speed, he's gone. And Bergeron will attempt to convert. He does. A good afternoon for Bergeron and a Northwestern scoring drive that stalled at the Michigan 23-yard line turns into another Michigan touchdown on the 16-yard run by Ricks. 38-0 Michigan over Northwestern. Watkins are deep for Northwestern to receive Bergeron's kickoff. Three minutes and 51 seconds left to play in this game. And Michigan has it wrapped up, making it a good homecoming in Ann Arbor. At the 15-yard line, Kenny Watkins. He's at about the 27-yard line. Tom Hassel is the man who tripped him and forced him to go down. On the next series of downs, Northwestern was forced to punt, so we move ahead to action later in the quarter. First and ten. D.J. Dickey. Hands off to Rick Rogers. And he's up near the 25-yard line. A gain of six on the play. Bo Schembechler in Michigan unloading their bench. Take a look at Northwestern up front. They're unloading their bench also. Number 50, Walling's in there at middle guard, and he does a pretty good job getting over to the ball. Second down and four. Castle is the fullback, and freshman Rick Rogers, the tailback, cuts it up for a first down. Out to the 34-yard line. Rick Rogers from Inkster. 6'2", 200 pounds. And next year's Butch Wolfolk, perhaps. Very much so. He is one of the most highly uh, considered running backs that Michigan has. He's out of Wayne Memorial, an all-state player last year. Uh, an outstanding uh, tailback. Michigan has a couple of them. Rodgers is one of them. The other one, Brian Mercer out of Cincinnati. First and ten. Dickey runs the option and runs into trouble. A tackle made rather quickly on Dickey. 62, they surprised me with that number. Neustetter, inside linebacker. Little game experience here in the final minute at Ann Arbor. Much of the crowd has left the stadium, going back to their tailgate picnic. 
enjoy what sun they can here in late October. On second down, Dickey to throw. Knocked down. And incomplete, intended for Rockington. Defensive coverage by 26, Gatewood. That stops the clock, 31 seconds left. We asked the question at the beginning of this game, which Michigan team would we see? We saw the dominant Michigan team. Uh, we, we also saw them, I think, play a team that easily dominated. Easily dominated. the delay Rogers gets the first down he's out to the 46 yard line they'll move the markers before starting the clock the one thing I think that is important is that they need this kind of thing get the young players into the game like Rick Rogers and they're getting the good experience and they're having a situation where they're blowing somebody out. They've got the opportunity to get their confidence back after two losses in the Big Ten. Because the rest of the season isn't going to be easy. Rodgers again on first down. This time into Northwestern Territory down to the 48-yard line. And that'll be it for this one. Time runs out. Michigan recording a 38 to nothing victory over Northwestern. Doing it with the big plays. Steve Smith passing for touchdowns. And Lawrence Ricks running for a pair. A five-yarder and a 60-yarder just moments ago that sealed the victory and sent Northwestern to its 7th and 27th consecutive loss, depending on the way you're counting. This is Larry Adderley for Jim Brandstetter inviting you to join us next week as the Wolverines travel to Bloomington to take on the game.